Hey, what's up, everybody? We want to welcome you to this week's episode of NCC Unplugged. This episode, we have a special interview with Olivia Oriszczak, and she shares with us her time with Circuit Riders. Uh, this was a very lengthy interview. We had a great time uh, talking with her. So we are splitting this up into two sections. Uh, the first episode will air today, and the second episode will air next week. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome to NCC Unplugged. My name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister at Norwin Christian Church. Really excited you are listening. Today's going to be one of those days where we have a conversation. And so I'm really excited about the conversation here in the room with me is Matt Mastriani, our tech guru here at NCC, does all things tech and media and helps us out in a lot of different ways. Thanks for having me once again, Jeff. Yeah. And then our interview today, our conversation that we're going to be having is with someone that's been part of an NCC family for quite a while. And I knew her as Olivia or a shack, but I've just been told that apparently that's the incorrect way of saying your last name. So Liv, tell us the correct pronunciation of your last name. So my last name is Arishchak, but that was close, but I'm so happy to be here today. We're excited to have you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've been saying your last name wrong forever too. That's so. okay. Sorry. Everyone does. Yeah. It's normal now. <laughs> we might as well just change it back. Yeah. There you go. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been coming to NCC? Yeah, so I've been coming to NCC my entire life, as long as I can remember. I'm pretty sure my mom started bringing me here as soon as I was born. So yeah. I have grown up through K Kids Kingdom and the youth group and everything. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. For those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about the life stage where you are right now. So right now, I just graduated from Hempfield High School last year. So I would be like a freshman in college. But this past year, I decided to do a program called Circuit Riders, which is called a discipleship training school based out of YWAM, which is called Youth with a Mission. So I moved to California for a few months for that. And then I just recently got back from touring the Rockies region, which is super fun on an outreach type thing. Yeah. And you'd come in and check in, you know, during holidays and things, you'd come back into town. And I yes. love checking in with you, seeing where you're going next, because it sounded really exciting. <laughs> yes, it was totally awesome. So I just got back from, we did, after Christmas, we did California, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado and Utah. Oh, wow. So, I mean, you're not just visiting these places. What are you doing? What is Circuit Riders? Give us a little glimpse and then we'll back up and, and figure out how you got there. What is Circuit Riders? Yeah. So Circuit Riders, like I said, is a part of Youth with a Mission. So we're like a branch of that that's based in Huntington Beach only. So what I did was when I went for the discipleship training school, there is three months of a lecture phase, which is kind of like college, except it's all preparing you for outreach. So we have classes every day and you pick your track. I was in the messenger's track, which focuses on communication and preaching. And then aside from that, there's also the music track, which is people that sing and play instruments. And then there's the media track also, which does all of our social media stuff. So I was in messengers, had classes every single day. They would fly speakers in, which was super cool focused on different things every single week. We had Holy Spirit Week, Gospel Week, Freedom Week, and that whole time prepares you for the tour. So my tour was called Carry the Love, which focused on college campuses, so reaching mm. college campuses. And what we would do is we would partner with students already on campus, and we would just set it up like six months to a year in advance, and we would show up and put on an event there and just basically reach people with the message of Jesus. Circuit Riders, their motto is to save the lost, to revive the saved, and train them all. So believer, non-believer, everyone, we were just there to preach the gospel and have like a two-day event for them. Yeah. So it was awesome. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So kind of stepping back from from that, what got you interested? And I guess even before that, like what was your what what was your walk like 
with God? Like, was it always like, were you always so on fire to like move across the country and do this? <laughs> or did you have a moment where you're like, no, I need to do this. And if it was, if there was a moment, share with us what that was. Yeah. So basically, like I said, I grew up in church my whole entire life. This is a really funny story, but it actually started with my love for coffee. And at the church, I loved getting coffee every Sunday morning. And I had told my mom, I was like, man, they need some different creamer options here. (laughs) I was like, we need more creamers. Because I think at the time it was just like half and half. So she like a few weeks later came back to me and was like, well, if you think that we need more creamer, you need to sign up for the coffee ministry Mm. and do something about it. So I ended up signing up for the coffee ministry. And next thing you know, I signed up for every ministry there was. I got back involved with youth group, which I went to every once in a while, but Mm -hmm. not really consistently. Ended up making like best friends with all those people, started hanging out with them all the time. So I just got super involved in the church and it was like the best time of my life. And it really changed my perspective from just like attending church on a Sunday morning, which I had done for so long. Like I had done that for how many years? Mm -hmm. 16, 17 years. And once I started getting involved, it was like my whole perspective changed. And I just, I was so excited to come. And next thing you know, I was here all the time, all throughout the week. Coming extra early, making coffee on Sunday morning. Yes, extra early and extra late. And... I think that's what just really got me like set on fire. Do you think the motivation behind or the realization behind it, like you told your mom, hey, this needs to happen in the church. Do you think the light bulb moment was, oh, I I am the church and I can do something about it? Yeah, I think I didn't realize how much of an impact like I could have, even though that's something so simple, mm-hmm. like coffee creamer. I was just like, oh, you know, the the adults can handle that. And I was like, once I started getting into it, I was like, wait a second. Like we we are the the church now. Like mm-hmm. this isn't this isn't just their jobs. Like it's our job too to to be building the church as well. Yeah. No, that's great. I think there's a phrase handing the keys over. And yeah. some churches are very protective of those where we say, well no, we need to we need to control these. The adults need to do it. Let the kids stay to the side. But when we realize we can hand the keys of the church over to the next generation now, yeah. and, and we talk about that a lot around here is the youth aren't the church of the future. They're the church now. For you to get a glimpse of you know, something you can do, even if it's as small as coffee creamer, but you realized that impact doesn't have to stay there. Like you said, you signed up for so many other ministries. So what are some of the other things that you started getting involved in? We did VBS together. Yes, we did VBS. That That was was my that was my first introduction to like standing on stage doing Mm. anything. And it was it was obvious. It was obvious because (laughs) I mean, I think it was only like four days long and like three of those days I did absolutely terrible. But I know like Jeff, every time he'd be like, you did good. Don't worry about it. I was like, (laughs) I don't know if that's necessarily true. But actually on tour, my role was hosting the night. So I would start the night. And all I could think back to was my VBS experience. Where it started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <absolutely. laughs> so I was so, so thankful for that. That's... And that, that ended up leading me right into what I was doing anyways. Cool. Communion was another thing, another funny story, because I was with Jean. Mm-hmm. She is amazing. And I told her about how I was gluten-free, which is kind of taboo, like for the older generation, you know, it's kind <laughs> of a, a younger thing. But we ended up getting like the gluten-free communion cups. Yeah. And my mom was like, what's going on? Like, you're making these like little changes. I was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but it's <laughs> awesome. But yeah, little stuff like that. We're just, I don't know. I started realizing like, wow, this isn't just their job. Like, and that's one thing we talked about in circuit riders a lot because it is a young community. It's mm-hmm. a young mission space community. Even our people who lead us are in their 30s, 40s, and obviously we have upper leadership, but it's super young. And one thing they talk about a lot is, well, we can't do this on our own. You know, our generation can't do this on our own. And we need to look up to to the older generations to lead us because we can only do so much. And a, a lot of times I think our generation in the church, we get so fired up and get so riled up 
but we try to do it our, on our own, which doesn't work, you know? So that's one thing really important as like young people to recognize is, hey, let's find like leadership. Let's find people that can really like guide us into what we need to be doing and make sure that we're doing it right and be held accountable. Mm -hmm. So, so what was some of the decision you were looking at graduating high school? Like most kids, you're looking at your options, college, now the circuit rider thing, tech school, you know, there's a lot of options out there. What, what got you to lean towards this? And then I know there's some questions. How did you guys work that out as a family? Talk through some of that decision making that you guys did. Yeah. So I, my whole entire life thought that I was going to college to play college softball Hmm. and I ended up tearing my ACL, throwing javelin. So that kind of shut down most of my sports options, which was super disappointing in the moment. The the way that I actually found out about circuit riders was TikTok, which which sounds crazy because again, a lot of people are like, you know, TikTok's demonic and that that may be true, but TikTok led me to yeah. <laughs> like one of the best places that I could be. And it was really interesting because once I got out there, a lot of the the people even that I like lived with in my house, I think there were 175 students in total, mm. but a lot of them found out through TikTok or found out through social media, which is super interesting because I think it just shows how important like even stuff like this, like just like podcasts mm-hmm. are. But I, I, since sports got shut down, I was looking at like culinary school or something like that. But I, I had a torn ACL. So I was laying in bed, scrolling back through TikTok, <laughs> which I, <laughs> I went back to my saved videos and one of the videos that I saved was the circuit riders one, mm. which was kind of a a dumb video in the best way. It was just kids loving Jesus running around the beach with a speaker. And I thought, there is no better thing I've ever seen than this. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to go to the beach, you know, and have people running around like this. And I started to think about it. It was like three in the morning one night and I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? Like, if I just saw a video about this, stuff like this must be real. I I genuinely thought that young people on fire in big groups like that did not exist. Mm-hmm. I had no clue. So <laughs> this this is not my best move ever, but I signed up that night. There's an application wow. you have to fill out. 3 a.m. I'm like typing on my phone. This is like stuff you should probably like sit down and think <laughs> about because it's asking you questions like your testimony and stuff like that. I was not thinking like that. So I just texted it out on my phone, (laughs) didn't tell my parents at all, went through an interview process with them, didn't tell my parents because I fear of rejection, which has been broken off now. Mm. But I was scared that like I was going to tell people and then I was going to get like denied or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I ended up getting accepted. And then across like the dinner table one night, I just threw it out there to my mom <laughs> like hey I signed up for this thing in California this like Christian group and I I personally didn't know a lot about it so we started digging into it and I know she like contacted you and a, a lot of other people at the church I'm just trying to make sure it wasn't a cult mm-hmm. you know <laughs> which is super important I'm super super grateful for that and I think my mom and my whole family was kind of worried about that mm-hmm. like what in the world did she just get herself into? What was like her initial reaction? Like you're at the table and you're you're sharing this. Like a lot of times, so it's it's usually like the same reaction. She'll be like, you know, we'll have to look into that. You know, it's always the right. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm just trying as a parent. My my daughter isn't. Quite, she'll she'll be 16 this year. Yeah. So like as a parent, I'm trying to put myself in. In your mom's shoes to be like, hmm, how would have I reacted yeah. in that situation? Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm so grateful for the people at the church that like she surrounded herself with because I don't know what her reaction would have been like um, if she wasn't like she's she's a suit. Like, I love my mom. She is such a good uh, like role model for me. And she never she never like it wasn't like she immediately said no or like that's crazy or something like that even though mm-hmm. that was crazy like <laughs> right. your 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 daughter comes to you right out of high school and proposes moving across, across the, the country, country to yep. California of all places and 
to run down the beach with a boombox. With a boombox, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm trying to show her the videos and I'm like, look how cool this looks, you know? <laughs> and I don't know if she, I don't know if she believed that I actually wanted to do that until like I kind of, I stopped applying to colleges. Like she was telling me, mm. hey, you need to apply. These deadlines are coming up. And I would not apply. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to. So I think that might have been the the point where she realized like, oh, she might be serious. Yeah. Well, it's a wise move on her part to seek counsel from others. Yeah. She didn't make a decision at 3 a.m. like others did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for her to seek out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in to interject, what's interesting part of that story as well is your mom was in a small group with us. And whenever this first all, you know, started, she's like, you know, we, we want to look into this and see, you know, make sure it isn't a call. <laughs> I remember her saying that and everything. And my wife actually works at a university around here in Pittsburgh. And my wife was always like, once you graduate high school, you go to college. That's just what you do and everything. But over years of being in the the college setting she's like yeah college isn't for everyone like there are other options and other things out there so i remember having that conversation with your mom because i i went a different track you know i tried the college thing for one semester and i was like no nah, not for me so yeah it's just it's cool to see that there were other options out there for you and you know your your mom was open to uh allowing you to to do that yeah that's, yeah. that's actually interesting that you say that because she would always like after after softball and everything went down the drain she was always one who told me you know you can always go to community college you don't have to go to college mm -hmm. and then i hit her with bam i'm gonna move to california i'm going to cali <laughs> <laughs> so i don't think Let's that's do what this. she was expecting no, but no. <laughs> that was i'm so thankful for her and her reaction and also like her looking into it for me because yeah. if i would have ended up somewhere crazy that would have right, right. been bad yeah so you're looking at this program. How long is circuit riders? Like this wasn't going to be a four year program, like a typical college. So was it, was it, Hey, I'll do this for a year. I mean, you're now at the point where you've been graduated for a year. Is that how long the program is? Yeah. So the program is seven months in total. So it's three months of the lecture phase, which is all classes. And then if you do the fall school, which I did, you come home for a month for Christmas in New Year's, and then you fly back out to your outreach spot, mm -hmm. which is two and a half more months. So after that, you can like apply to go back on staff at any of the YWAM locations, which I think they have like 800 around the world. So they are everywhere. I think they actually, I think they have one in Pittsburgh and Lancaster. There's a big mm -hmm. one because I was meeting people in California that were all from Lancaster. I was like, what in the world is happening? Turns out there's realize, a big Y-Wing. Yeah, you didn't realize you could stay a lot closer. Right, yeah. right. I would have chose California too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's seven months in total, but they also have a one-week summer school, which I debated on going to. And I think that's also something my mom suggested was, well, you know, why don't you try it out? And I think my response was like, no, too much money. I'm just going to go because <laughs> I know I'm going in the fall, you know? Yeah. So through this process, were you thinking, <clears throat> what were you thinking spiritually as far as, you know, is this a step of trusting God? You talked about fear of rejection. What's going on in your life emotionally and spiritually as you're thinking about this big move? Yeah. So one thing that I have told some people that like I have like ministered to which which sounds crazy, but also I think that our generation likes to to hear people like being real, like not putting on some fluff show mm -hmm. um, and some fancy words. And I think my thought process was just like, if if God wants to bring me here, he'll bring me here and he'll bring me through it. And since I had an injury as well, <laughs> I kind of would make the joke that, you know, God broke my leg to to get me to do this and while i was out there i kept messing it up more i would i literally kept falling down <laughs> and i would like be on the ground like crying and then i would like make a joke to to my friends like you know what he, he had to do it once to get me here and he's gonna get me through it like no matter what happens 
I also would tell people if this isn't true, like if if the gospel is not true, then like when we die, okay, like you know. But mm. if the gospel is true, which it is, like you're gonna want to go to heaven, you know. And all I kept thinking to myself is, if God brought me here, He's gonna get me through it. And I know heaven's real. I'm going to heaven. You know, I want to go there so bad. And I want everyone to know about it, too. And I I kind of felt like unqualified, too, which I think a lot of Christians often feel unqualified to go out and spread the gospel. Like, if you're not a preacher, you can't go out and spread the gospel. And so I was kind of thinking to myself, like, if I can do it, of all people, anyone can do it. And I'll be able to tell people that. I'll be able to go home to my mom, like, mom— if I could do this, like you can do it. You know, mm-hmm. you can go out to the grocery store and talk to people about the gospel, like have God conversations. Like I'm I'm not a genius. I'm not a Bible scholar, I'm not a preacher, but like I got out there and did it. And I think that's like good enough for everyone. Like yeah. you can do it too. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, look at scripture. Who was qualified? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, that was one thing that struck me so much when I was, when I was on tour was Someone said, you know, every time that God gave someone something to do, they never said, oh, perfect timing. This mm. is perfect timing. You know, yeah. no one said that. Absolutely. So so if you sit there and wait for the perfect time to be perfectly qualified, it the, the time's never going to come. Mm-hmm. And that hit me like, OK, you're right. Like, I'm just going to do it a full send. So cool. and that, yeah. that worked out awesome. And I, I'm so grateful for for the whole entire thing, because I feel like equipped for life that mm. like, I don't, I don't have to be anything crazy special or, or crazy equipped. Like, obviously like there's stuff that needs to be, you know, written on your heart and like, like cultures that you have to have, but you don't have to be any type of special, crazy religious person. Like if that makes sense. No, no, it does. It, it go and it, essentially your whole story too it's i love how god just uses something that we may not think is special like going back to the coffee thing like that was literally the catalyst for all of this like (laughs) coffee creamer we could be doing better okay boom and like look where you're at now so yeah it it, that the whole thing of not needing to be 100 percent qualified and god using you where you are right then right there to to make a difference and we'll get into some of the stories in a little bit but like you have changed with the power of god you have changed people's lives from that like one decision so like that's that's pretty incredible to to sit back and think about too so do you feel did you feel any like prompting or guiding from the holy spirit at all whenever you were making all these decisions i think that looking back on it i i didn't really have a total understanding of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. until I went out there and I was able to look back on things and and pick out encounters and say, okay, that was the Holy Spirit. That was that was God's hand over my life. And I think back to that specific instance where I, I signed up for circuit mm-hmm. riders and I think to myself, how many like how how often does it happen that I I go back in my save videos, find a random video, sign up for a whole program at 3 a.m and type out like all these paragraphs on why I want to, why I want to go. Right. You know, and I look back on that and I say, okay, that has to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. And even like there were, there were like encounters I had leading up to this before I even made that decision to go that just with, just with random people in the community, like barber shops, like stuff like that, where I would have these crazy stories and come home, be mind blown. Mm -hmm. And, and no one else no one else really thought that they were crazy, but I was, I was so (laughs) struck by these instances and I was just like, okay, like something has to be happening here. Like God is obviously moving, like pushing me towards something. Yeah. 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 And I think, I mean, we talked about you doing VBS before going out there. That can be, I think a prompting of the Holy Spirit. You're like, I guess I'll sign up to be on stage for VBS. (laughs) Like at the moment you had no idea that was a training ground in a way for some of the things that you'd experience. Throughout this program. One of the things I, I remember this too, and I don't know where it falls in, along the line of you helping out with VBS, but you got up and you helped with announcements one morning at church. I remember like I was running the live stream and I was like, 
that's Olivia. What what's she doing? And like you did an incredible job. And like I don't know. Do you remember? Was that before or after VBS or? Were you already a seasoned pro at being up on stage because of that? I was not. Absolutely not. The whole entire time leading up. See, things like that, like just doing VBS and doing those announcements, like I I don't know how I ended up there other than God. It's the same thing as circuit riders. I'm like, how in the world? Because I noticed that I went here my whole entire life and I would would meet people in they like I knew who they were, but they had no idea who I was, which is OK. But then once I started like being there more often, mm-hmm. like it was like I couldn't get out the door because I knew so many people. And my parents are looking at me like we got to go. go. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. There, there's just there's no explainable way that I, of all people, would be put in that position mm-hmm. like years ago. Even even a year and a half ago, probably, if you would have told me that I would I would be doing ministry, mm-hmm. absolutely not. No way. No way. No way. No way. So let's go back to circuit riders a little bit. Tell us tell some stories, the experiences you had in training, and then what you've called going on tour to these different places. Yeah. So I think so. Starting in lecture phase, which would have been those first three months, one one week that struck me particular so we would have different speakers fly in for for every different week just about and the week that struck me the most was holy spirit week and i think that's because i i had known about the holy spirit but i just did not have a deep understanding which is so important because that that is so key to having like an intimate relationship with Jesus is understanding the Holy Spirit and and even just asking the Holy Spirit to move and just fill you up. So that was with Amy Ward and she just absolutely blew my mind. She came in with with the craziest most amazing stories I've ever heard in my life. And I remember calling calling my mom after those weeks and I, I I literally thought that I was probably scaring her on the phone because I, I was telling her these stories that I just heard and I was like, there's just no way that this is not real. Mm-hmm. Like the Holy Spirit was just that piece that connected everything for me. That it just made sense. It just it it made everything so much more real and every single encounter, like like divine appointments, like God set up so many divine appointments and I wouldn't be able to to recognize that. I was just calling those coincidences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. after I realized like that the Holy Spirit is, is, is a key factor, which I don't know why that didn't click before. It was like so many things that I had heard so many times they were there, but, but they had to become real. And all that took was like an extra step of activation. And I think that's what circuit riders really did for me was was made me an activated believer. Mm. So I think also, so we would have our classes every day and we had what were called outreach Wednesdays, which were supposed to be like a preparation for tour, which they were, but nowhere near tour. Tour was absolutely crazy. But there was this one specific encounter that I had. It was the the day before I left to come back home for Christmas break. We were at Kava Bowls, which if you haven't tried, it is so, so good. (laughs) It's like Chipotle, but like a hundred times better. (laughs) So we were getting Kava and I was eating with my friend Meredith. And at the table next to us, we were outside. There was this lady who was who was homeless but you could see her drawing on this shirt or like coloring on the shirt i think she was using nail polish which i thought was interesting i thought that's really cool but she's drawing on something on the table <laughs> that was a rectangle and i was like huh, that kind of looks like a bible like i couldn't see it but i was like that's for sure a bible mm. and i was like that's so interesting so I was just kind of like watching her. I I probably scared her because I was literally <laughs> staring at her like two tables away. I'm watching her draw on this shirt. And finally, I went over there and <laughs> asked her if I could buy her like something from Kava. 
and I ended up getting her like I don't know a drink and a brownie or something and just sat down with her and started talking meanwhile my friends like over there just <laughs> it was it was the longest conversation ever I felt bad I just left my friends stranded we started talking and turns out she was drawing on top of a bible and she's telling me all about this art she's doing and she's talk starts talking about like how she's like just wants to glorify God through her art and I'm like this is absolutely mm. crazy. Yeah. So we we start talking about verses and stuff and she what struck me about her was she was the most faith-filled person I've ever talked to in my entire life. Did not care about her circumstances mm. at all. Did not care. Just wanted to give the glory to God and thanked God for Everything there was, everything there was. She thanked God for the weather. She thanked God for, she would say, talk about the place that she would go to rest, which I thought like that just like, that stuck with me for sure. Was She always talked about the, the place that she would go to rest and how thankful she was for that. And she shared some verses with me and I shared some verses with her. And she actually let me and my friend draw on this shirt that she was making. And she she asked when our flights were in the morning and what times they were so she could be praying for us. And I, we missed, we were supposed to be cleaning our Airbnb at this time to move out. And we were getting all these calls from our leaders. We missed them all because <laughs> our phones were dead. We were sitting there for so long. And I just, I, I was just blown away. I was just like, none of that even matters. I could care less how clean my room <laughs> is right now. I just got, I, I got to talk to the most amazing lady in the day before I leave too just so filled with faith I was so filled with faith after talking to her and I was like this is a divine appointment right before I go home like I'm bringing this with me I'm bringing this home so yeah you thought you were going over to minister to her right yeah and, and she then ended she ministers right. yeah that's cool right and that's just to to what she was saying too about being so thankful like that's just another way like we may look at her and be like, oh, she's homeless and, you know, down on her luck and stuff. But just like the mindset of God always taking care of us no yes. matter what, like she had a place to go to. Yes. It may not be ideal, but like to her, that was, you know, home and he was providing for her. And, you know, we just see that through through all of our lives. Like it may not be the ideal situation, but he's going to be providing for us no matter what. So. That's that's an awesome story. Yeah. yeah, she. I after that, I called my parents as well, and I was like, "You're never gonna believe this," <laughs> and they were probably like, "And your mom was like, it is a cult." No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so that was an amazing story. So tell us a little bit about your travels on tour. You talked about a few different states you went to. So you would go to a college campus. What would you do? Would you stand on the street corner? Did you have a you know a lecture hall to go to? What was that like? Yeah, so we we moved about every two days. So we traveled in a van, which was kind of fun. We had the smallest team. It was nine people. And we we made it work. <laughs> we would partner with the students that were already on campus, and we had two-day events. So the first day, basically, we would wake up. We would have team time, so just— I don't know, reading scripture and just praying over what we were going to do that day. And we would we would go out and evangelize usually, just start inviting people to our event that night. So we'd have a big event on the first night and we would we would literally just go walk around the campus and be like, hey, what are you doing tonight at seven? Like we we came up with so many funny things throughout tour. Like they were, we would call it like scooter evangelism. So we'd rent the like, the bird scooters yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like drive around and like the boys especially i don't know i, I guess the i guess the guys were like they were kind of easier to connect with each other i would say because they would pull up to other guys while they were walking to class or whatever and be trying to like convince them to come to this <laughs> event and and it worked it was a lot of people would come one thing about the rockies region though is it's a plowing region for sure because you have like the LDS church out there, which is has huge presence. So our events were you typically a little a little bit smaller than the other regions. 
but they were they were still so powerful and even like the smallest events i would say were sometimes the most powerful which was awesome to see but the first day we would basically invite people we would have event at seven o'clock do just like worship a message and then we would do prayer time like response time get home super late that night wake up the next morning and then we would do evangelism training so we would we would just say at the event, whoever wants to come tomorrow and learn how to go out and talk about the gospel, show up at one o'clock or whatever. So we would do that, which was so fun because we we would basically just equip people with like a two minute gospel, like have this written on your heart. You're typically not going to go up and just say this right away, you right, know, right. but like have this written on your heart so you can have conversations with people. And we would do like funny scenarios, like we would have the the people, you know, one one of the scenarios that they would do is like, you're with your friend at the zoo and they fell into the lion pit <laughs> and like you have one minute to share the gospel with them, <laughs> something like that. So we made it fun. And then right after that, we would send people out. And usually it was like one of us with an, a, like a student. And we would just go talk to people for two, three hours. And we would have people give their lives to Jesus every day, wow. just about every single day. Like even simple things like we'd have people give their lives to Jesus in Starbucks and Chick-fil-A yeah, playing. Awesome. I think it was Mar- no Super Smash Bros. We had someone give their life to <laughs> Jesus. I mean, just the just the craziest things like it doesn't have to be a scary conversation Mm -hmm. or anything you know like just talk to people just be normal like that was that's a key especially in our generation (laughs) is just hey be normal like what's up what are you doing today like did you ever run into any being on college campuses and everything did you ever run into any like people that weren't so willing to hear what you guys had to say (laughs) and yeah so typically (laughs) we we always would talk about i think it's like Oh gosh, Luke 9 and Matthew 10, I believe, could be wrong on that, talks about like shaking the the dust mm-hmm. off your sandals, which we would always like joke around about is like, hey, like there's the Great Commission, but also the Bible says like, let's shake mm-hmm. the dust off mm-hmm. our sandals. And we had to do that a lot. <laughs> you know, we would get rejected every day, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a rejection, like a worldly rejection where, where it's just like a, you know, stab in the heart. It's just kind of like, hey, like, that's okay. Right. Like, have have a great day, you know? Oh, nice. So, but most people actually were so receptive or or at least would, like, listen to what you had to say. And if they're not interested, like, that's okay because it's a seed planted. Mm-hmm. And as we did it more and more, it was just, it was so much easier to just say seed planted, mm-hmm. you know, because, because it, it was true. And we saw it time and time again. I think a lot of times people think that our generation wants nothing to do with the church, mm-hmm. wants nothing to do with with any of that. And I just think that that's not true because I saw it, you know, like most people want to hear what you have to say. And also an important thing that that works really well with people is hear what they have to say, too. You okay. know, a, yes. a, a great conversation starter was just like, Hey, what do you believe about God? Like, do you believe in God? And and they would start talking, and then you can pose questions, like mm-hmm. respectfully, like, okay, like why why do you believe that? Because here's here's what I think about God, you know, and that worked great because mm-hmm. you're not you're not like forcing it to people, right? Same message, it's right. just a different way of of doing it right. instead of preaching hellfire and brimstone, like you see all the like all these street preachers and everything right. that. You know how much of an impact are they really having? I, I think the true change of heart and preaching the gospel to people, you you have to have that show concern and love for them. Right. That's going to be a good place to end this week's episode of NCC Unplugged. We want to thank Liv for joining us for this first part of the interview. Make sure you tune in next week for part two of the interview with Liv and her experience uh, more in depth with circuit riders thank you for tuning in to ncc unplugged if you've enjoyed listening to our podcast we encourage you to share this with your friends and family ncc unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms and if you're ever interested in experiencing norwin christian church firsthand 
We invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 